The 1992 500, it was cold. I mean, really cold, like too cold to run. The tires wouldn't stick. And so we had crash after crash after crash. Cleaning up with nine drivers in the emergency room at the same time. In 92, I was up front, and we got a pit stop, and we had a bad pit stop. It relegated me to the back of the field, you know, so I was a bit upset. I did something stupid because on the restart, I figured I got to pass at least 10 cars, and I just really pinched it down in turn four, which I shouldn't have been a little more cautious, but I, did. I spun, and I got into the wall pretty hard, and I had, you know, both my feet crushed. You hate to see anybody get hurt, but if you're going to hurt somebody, it's nice to hurt somebody that's got some pull. Mario has always been interested in safety. His cars were always the leading edge of how good can I make it. So he put his voice behind it, and all of a sudden now it's we got to stop this stuff from happening, not fix the driver after they're broke. I want to be able to race tomorrow, next day, next week, next year. You know, if, if I'm all crushed up, you know, I can't. So. Uh, let's do something about it. You were not the macho driver, you know, by asking all those things, you know, but I figured, you know what, it's my bones, you know, so. I went in the ambulance with Mario Emerson Fittipaldi and, and Rick Mears from the track all together, and they didn't stop yelling at me all the way to the hospital. Emerson was mostly in Portuguese, so I have no idea what he was saying, but he was not happy. So I'm in a hospital and they put everything on ice because there was a couple of guys, I think, in front of me, and then all of a sudden, I hear the name Jeff Betty. My wife was sitting there with me, and, and she said, oh my gosh, he took the priority of everyone. I was getting ready to take Mario Andretti to surgery to work on his feet, and I walked in the room, and I said, we're gonna have to wait, because I can't go right now. We have another driver that's coming in that could have really serious injuries, and oh, by the way, it's your son, Jeff. They worked on him for like eight and a half hours. And Jeff really needed a lot of build up and he had to rebuild both of his heels. And Jeff, I think, lost two inches of height. That was the most traumatic time that you could imagine. You know, he was lucky to survive that, obviously. You know, the impact was almost unsurvivable. But uh, he's walking, you know, at least that. But uh, again, you know, that was a traumatic part of our life, for sure. The incidence of significant foot and ankle injuries kind of reached a climax in 1992. Several drivers were injured at Indy that year. It was time to really get serious about doing something about it. A huge effort was put into coming up with a suitable solution. General Motors Motorsports Technology Group offered their services and the research facilities in Warren, Michigan. We literally went to the racetrack with tape measures and cameras and photographed everything we could find, skid marks and angles and intervals between poles and the height of the wall, and then went to the shops and measured the cars, how much crush there was. I took the x-rays and figured out how much the legs had been shortened as a result of the accident. I made multiple trips back and forth to Warren, Michigan, to GM to crunch numbers with our data and run their sled with some of our data. And that was what we used as the numerical guideline for how much longer to make the nose. So the drivers weren't just running into the wall with their feet. There was a big decrease in foot and ankle injuries where we really used a scientific approach to correcting some of the injuries that we were having. 